Hi, my name is Dr. Ben Miles, and I'm a former PhD student in physics, specifically nanophysics and nano optics, so the study of tiny stuff. Uh, what I want to talk about today is my approach for taking notes during my PhD and the software I use now in my work and how my process has evolved over time. Because honestly, a PhD is, or anything academic, is hard enough as it is just because of the volume of data. Coming up with your own good note-taking system is absolutely essential if you want to get through it uh, as easily as possible. When I started my PhD program, I quickly realized that the note-taking systems that I've been using all my way through undergrad were just simply not going to cut it. They wouldn't be up to the task of a PhD because there's just so much information to read through, so many manuscripts to read through, so much to remember, and so much to slowly build up on in terms of your knowledge base over like a four year period. What got me through my undergrad was just basically highlighting textbooks. Uh, sometimes I'd write notes in a notebook, but the problem was these approaches just are impossible to easily ever reference again. Most of the time I found myself never even bothering to open the textbook or the notebook, uh, and I'd just have a nice stack of them that proudly were filled out quite diligently, but I'd basically just never look at ever again. My hope was essentially just that uh, I would remember the information when it came time to the exam, uh, because finding anything in particular just was going to be an absolute nightmare. What I learned after about a year of the PhD, uh, which I affectionately refer to as my, my write-off year, uh, was that I needed a better way of managing knowledge. What I needed was a knowledge management system. I just didn't know that those terms existed or that there was one out there that I could easily use. Uh, not something that was just a notebook, not something that was a Word document or a napkin, but an actual holistic way of keeping track of really complicated ideas and keeping track of how those complicated ideas related to each other. So all that is to say, I found a method that works for me and I'm hoping that some parts of it will work for you. I built my system ultimately back when I was doing my PhD using teeny tiny scraps of code that I wrote originally in Python uh, that also helped me run the microscope that I was building. So it was a bit of a bodge together system back then, but it kind of worked for me. What I've started to turn this into now is actually my own app that I'm developing called Protolist. Uh, but it doesn't matter if you use that or if you use Obsidian or if you use Roam or if you use Notion or if you use a pen and paper or slip boxes or whatever it is that you want to use. It doesn't actually matter, so don't be held back by trying to find the perfect piece of software. Build a system that works for you. Take the bits of other people's systems that you like and discard the bits that you don't like. Find something at the end of the day that meshes with how you like to work. I think that's probably the most important takeaway piece. The system that I started to develop is based on something called the Zettelkasten method, which is probably something that if you're interested in this space, you've come across before. It was originally developed back in the 1960s, I think, by a guy called Nicholas Luhmann as a way of managing his knowledge network. And he had a really difficult task of not having access to a computer. So he wrote it on tiny little index cards and kept those index cards strategically aligned near other index cards. Sounds like a really difficult system. We've got computers now nowadays so hopefully that process is much easier but really like this is an exercise in adaptation something that works for you is our end goal there are essentially three core principles when you go out and try and replicate some element of the Zettelkasten system you should number one take notes in your own words try to use when you do that full sentences because I find in particular that bullet points even if I try and use those they aren't really that helpful because when you go back a month, six months later down the line and you try and look at a bullet point and understand exactly the context of what idea you were trying to jot down, you very much find yourself looking at the kind of skeleton of the idea. What you want to do is put a little bit of meat on the bones, give it some context, give it some understanding, compile it as a kind of complete thought. And that complete thought, point number two, should be what they refer to as irreducible, as in its own simplest kind of concept. Try and capture an idea that is an idea in its simplest form, I guess. Not a list of different factors, not an essay, a simple idea framed simply in your own words. And number three, that that idea, that piece of knowledge must have some sort of connection to all of the other pieces of information within your knowledge system, within your brain at the end of the day. So find a way 
of tying those links between this new piece of knowledge back to all of your other pieces of knowledge that you've created before. What that will do for you is allow you to actually go back and find that information six months, a year, four years down the line, because it will be nested in a sensible place and you'll happily and serendipitously kind of stumble across it. So those are the three core concepts of going out and building a Zettelkassen method. So how do I use that system in kind of my own approach? Uh, I'll talk you through some of my kind of high level ideas and then I'll show you actually in the system that I've built how that works kind of mechanically. Step one is a reasonably simple one. You wanna find something that you wanna take notes on. Usually for me, that was a research paper uh, and usually that research paper came in the form of a PDF. Occasionally I would print it out, but I hated the idea of tomes and tomes of paper being on my desk because of the trees, but equally because they would go everywhere and I would lose them and things like that. Um, so I prefer to read PDFs on the good old fashioned computer or a Kindle or something like that. Very occasionally I would read books or textbooks, but most of the information that I was working on was sufficiently, I guess, at the cutting edge of what the field was doing that people really hadn't had time to write textbooks about it yet. Uh, so most of the stuff I found myself reading was, was manuscripts or research papers. Your goal, once you have something that you want to take notes on, is to capture what they refer to as fleeting notes, which are things like quick ideas, maybe little highlights or inspirations that kind of hit you as you read. This is what you want to frame those ideas that are kind of irreducible concepts, little novel ideas that are complete in and of their own right. There are two parts of a really good fleeting note. There is kind of the source, the thing that caused that inspiration, the, the thing that made you say, have that kind of aha moment. And then there is the digested version of what that aha moment actually means kind of in your own words, in your own context. It's really important here that rather than just highlighting something you find interesting, that you actually put it in your own words and add context. There's actually been a whole bunch of different studies that show that highlighting doesn't actually improve retention or understanding of material. And in fact, there's a couple of studies that say that highlighting actually hurts retention in the long run. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description to one such paper that kind of talks about some of those points. So it's not only important to kind of reframe that aha moment in your own ideas so that it kind of lodges in your, in your brain, but equally, don't just write down that idea that you've had, as it will be really hard to find the source of that idea, which you might want to go back and reference or cite or check that your understanding of it or your nuance of your understanding of it uh, may have changed at some point in the future. You wanna be able to go back to it really quickly, really easily, find it and say, does that actually marry up to my new understanding about this field as a whole, or this topic as a whole. So what I wanna do now that we've kind of talked at a very high level about how to take really good fleeting notes is I've replicated some of my knowledge system into Protolist, the software platform that I use. So let's head in and take a little bit of a live tour about how I take notes in the platform and what that actually looks like. So welcome to Protolist. So this is a small part of my knowledge system. Uh, it's all stored online because I found I ended up saving a copy of my notes anyway to Google Drive. Uh, and at the time that I was doing my PhD, I was using about 10 different devices in all of the different labs that I was working in. And I was moving between those labs. Um, and a lot of them were things like clean rooms, which had a dedicated computer that you're allowed to use in it. Uh, and you weren't allowed to download computer programs onto that computer. So I ended up needing to just use a web application anyway. So for this, this works nicely for me. Uh, it means that I can kind of turn up at any computer across the whole world and I will have access to all of my notes and my note system uh, automatically there without having to download any software. Hashtag, it doesn't work on mobile just yet. So on the left-hand side, you'll see that I've kind of broken the way I work into a few key kind of categories. At the top, and what we'll take a little bit of a look at first is what I refer to as my bibliography notes, or my source notes, I guess, which is basically any interesting source that I wanna take notes on. Uh, so kind of the first step that I'll usually do is upload a PDF or a manuscript or something like that that I'm interested in reading into the system, which you can do just as a simple kind of drag and drop, uh, wait for it to upload, and let's just open up that PDF and see what that actually looks like. Uh, so you'll see the PDF is on the left-hand side. 
Uh, and on the right hand side is, well, we'll get to it in a second, but is all the information that I'm gonna try and collect from this source. So this will be where all my fleeting notes kind of appear. What I'm doing is I'm going through and reading a manuscript, say, uh, is looking for ideas that strike me as particularly interesting or particularly novel, things that I want to kind of retain access to um, that I may want to reference in the future. So there's one that I found earlier, which is here, uh, which I'm interested in capturing and keeping in the future. So to do that, I will press capture. And what that'll do is it'll open up a little prompt for me. Uh, looks like it didn't realize there's a couple space bars that it, uh, extra spaces that it needs in there, which I'll just stick in there quickly. Um, but what this does, it opens up a prompt for you to put in or to reframe or to redigest that quote that you've just extracted from that text. So the actual source material won't be affected if you type in this box. You can happily delete absolutely everything if you choose to. Usually I don't, usually I keep it kind of um, in the box, uh, but I will kind of reframe that idea in my own words directly above it. So this is something that probably is only interesting to me to capture or maybe other optical physicists out there in the world if there are any of you listening. Uh, but this is a, a quote that kind of describes organic molecules that stop fluorescing after a certain number of photocycles. If that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. It's interesting to me and something that I wanna capture. I will put that in my own words so that it's more easy for me to find. So I would maybe turn that into uh, organic fluorophores quench during studies making them difficult whoa, optical labels to work with for long term studies. Cool. Might not mean anything to you, means something kind of useful to me. Uh, what you will see as we captured that is that it has appeared on the right hand side are some of your fleeting notes. You can open it uh, to see kind of all of the notes that you've captured. But the thing that I like about that is that you can always go back and reference it and find the source that it came from. So it's been tagged with this particular page that we're in. So it's all well and good that we've gone out and highlighted and captured and reframed this information in our own words. But at the moment, it's kind of locked in this particular document. We want to extract these ideas out of this document and bring them into our kind of higher knowledge base. To do this, we want to turn them into something called a permanent note, or we want to connect them to an existing permanent note. But we want to sift which ideas are really valuable to us and move them out of just being stuck in a document and into a repository of all the interesting ideas that we've got. I keep all of my permanent notes contained in one place in this separate table here. I've only collected a couple of them out of my kind of wider knowledge base. But here's a kind of good representative group of them uh, that we can use just for kind of talking through how the system actually works. So if from my permanent notes, I go back into my bibliography and go back into my fleeting note, you can create a new permanent note directly from this atom. So reading again what I've just written, organic fluorophores quench during long-term studies, making them not very good uh, point probes, essentially for optical research. What does that mean to me? I wanna try and condense that idea down. Really at the end of the day, what I'm kind of saying is that the choice of optical label uh, in experiments, Ooh is influenced by how long I'm gonna run that experiment. Uh, optical fluorophore might be good for a short experiment. It's not good for a longer experiment. I'm just gonna say by duration. That is a useful concept in and by itself. Uh, I'm gonna add that to my workspace and click on, type in permanent notes and add that as a new page within my system. So, I can go find that permanent note. The choice of, lab, uh, of optical labels and experiments is influenced by duration. Oh, my type, my spelling is terrible. Uh, or equally, I can get back to it by finding it here. And if I click on that tag, it will take me into that page. That page at the moment is empty and arguably not really that useful to me. It's got my 
uh, kind of fleeting note that I've tagged into it on the side. So that's a good starting point. Uh, but if I want to expand what this permanent note actually means, I need to do a little bit more work to it to make it a bit more valuable. What I typically do here is drag my fleeting note into the page just to give me a bit of a kind of starting point, I guess, because I find it a bit intimidating starting from a blank page. I think it's nicer to have some words already there. Now that we've dragged that fleeting note into this page, what you actually find is that uh, the symbol next to the fleeting note has changed from nothing to cited. So we know that we've actually used this idea in a particular page somewhere. And we can kind of trace back through where it originated from because we can go back to the source at any point if we need to. Uh, what I typically do here is kind of rewrite again these words in my own kind of thoughts. Um, so I probably don't need that bit because that's already been condensed a little bit. I may some say something like um, for long-term st studies, are there, are there other more advantageous probes that offer better measurement capabilities? And this to me has started, maybe not a fully complete idea just yet, but the start of something that will be potentially valuable, maybe a new course of direction for me to kind of design some experiments around and a place and a source that I can always look back to as to why that idea even arose in my mind in the very first place. At any point by control and clicking on that idea, that nested idea that I've cited in my document, I can reopen the fleeting note if I do kind of want to reference any of the bits that maybe I deleted, if I feel like I deleted too much and I want to kind of reference actually what was the original context. Or by clicking on the source, I can go back to the original document and find uh, the actual original context as to where that idea first came from. And again, I can then follow it kind of back through as to where I've actually used it. So in that way, you always have a really short loop between where does this idea come from and how am I using it and am I using it actually in the right context? There's one last thing which is really important to do when it comes to permanent notes, and that's to link that new idea to the rest of your knowledge base. So if I look at the rest of my permanent notes, there's actually a couple of them that strongly relate to this new idea. One here in particular, the iSCAT enhancement of metallic nano nanoprobes. Uh, don't worry if that doesn't mean anything. Let me go back into this uh, page. And what I'm interested in doing is linking that other note into this permanent note. So I'm gonna add a new link and I'm gonna type in that iSCAT enhancement. So now, if I want to at any point, I can jump quickly between these sorts of ideas. I can go and read that note and get a bit of understanding, or equally I can go back uh, to the choice, to the note that we just created. What you'll notice is that similar to the permanent note that we just created, this permanent note also has a couple of fleeting notes uh, kind of related to it uh, that ultimately informed me kind of having this idea in the first place. So these little fleeting notes are still valuable and they're valuable not only in the context of this permanent note, but in the context of maybe any other notes that this permanent note is related to. So what I actually like to do uh, to kind of help me clarify ideas is to start in my permanent note and to change the relationship of how these notes interact from just being linked and on kind of an equal level to actually being uh, kind of a hierarchy in nature. So by setting this secondary note as a child, uh, where we want to inherit all of the fleeting notes from it, I get all of the fleeting notes, see these two just have popped up, uh, that were recorded here, and I can read through them and work out, do they relate to this knowledge that I'm trying to write about? And when you know, it turns out that the second one actually helps me kind of advance my idea that I'm thinking about. It says that metallic nanoparticles produce signal proportional to the amount of incident light that they are illuminated by, which actually potentially is an answer to the question that I've asked in my permanent note. So I might want to actually incorporate that into my permanent note and kind of change this note to reflect this new understood knowledge, this new linked knowledge. So I'm gonna remove that question. And in its place, I'm gonna say, could metallic nanoparticles 
uh, be better long duration optical probes. Uh, and actually this was the process that clued me in, basically these exact ideas that clued me in uh, to what ultimately became my PhD project. And they sa that sounds really simple, uh, but I guess like we hadn't thought of using this sort of system within our research before. And that was one of our aha moments. And it's really satisfying to me even now to be able to retrace that idea that kind of started me in the right direction of what my PhD project actually became. Uh, beyond that point, typically I turn off uh, the kind of relationship. You'll notice that the fleeting note stays here because now I've cited it in this page just here. Um, so I can find it again if I ever want to. I can go back and find the source or I can find the permanent note that it was originally cited in or I can find this permanent note that it's also been cited in. Uh, and that's kind of how my system works. I would say one final point, I guess, why I like having these in a uh, table rather than just as a page is because I can add properties to all of these things. So what is this in relation to? This is relation to, uh, I guess, some future experiments that I'm interested in performing. And if I only wanna see the notes that relate uh, to future experimentation, I can filter by those and I can read through them and try and understand better how they kind of connect to one another, which ultimately gives me a little bit more kind of fine tuned granularity in how I'm managing my knowledge. Uh, one thing I also like to do within my bibliography notes kind of on a similar context uh, is look at some of these ideas on a to-do list. So uh, usually when I add something new into my uh, database, I'll click it as inbox. And then I can see if I ever shift to my to-do list, which is just a simple Kanban board that I've got a paper that I really should read sometime soon. Uh, and I can kind of move it around into the rest of my system. So that is broadly how I manage my knowledge. Uh, like I said, hopefully there are some useful elements that you can take from this and build into how you're thinking about building a knowledge management system. Uh, by no means, like I said before, are you, do I expect you to kind of replicate every single step? Do something that works for you. It can't be too onerous, otherwise you'll find that you don't actually do it. Um, really what's most important, I guess, is consistency. This is an activity, this kind of knowledge creation and curation uh, process that just takes time. And you need to invest small amounts of time in it every day uh, so that it builds to be something much bigger than the sum of all of its individual parts in the long run. Once you have a lot of these core kind of clarified ideas as permanent notes, the same way we dragged a fleeting note in, those can really be the kind of the starting points of what might become a research paper or might become your thesis uh, or an essay you're writing or something like that. So yeah, hopefully that was useful. It was a little bit of an introduction into how I kind of manage my knowledge. Uh, do stick around. I'll try and put some more uh, kind of videos on the channel that relate to some of these sorts of knowledge management systems. But yeah, until next time, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you around. Goodbye.